uh, Nick uh, Smolovsky, um, who actually, uh, you're a contributor to our magazine from time to time, and you were one of our 40 outstanding geospatial professionals under 40. So we need a youngster here to talk about these academic studies. So Nick, introduce yourself and tell us all about the results of the testing that y'all did. Awesome, thanks Gavin. Can you hear me okay? See me okay? All right, so appreciate everybody uh, sticking around for this. Uh, I think that's the final presentation for the day. Uh, I'm very excited to be presenting to you on augmented reality and GIS. Give me just one second, let me share my screen. And so now hopefully you got everybody out there can see my screen, no problem. Okay, so for the next 30 minutes slash, you know, 15 additional minutes for questions, we're going to be reviewing augmented reality and geographic information systems, particularly um, on how they relate to the underground construction industry and more specifically, uh, horizontal directional drilling. Um, my name is Dr. Nicholas Smolovsky. My background is in GIS, behavioral geography, uh, visual resource management, and innovative GIS tech like uh, drones, augmented reality, uh, LIDAR, any type of data acquisition means a little bit uh, not part of the course or a little um, bit new. That's where I like to research. And so Gavin had mentioned that um, I've been part of some research recently uh, in terms of augmented reality and GIS. And so the research team at Arizona State University, ASU, um, is, should be on your screen right now. And I was just one of four people, well, and in, depending on which part of the research, different people plugged in a little heavier or, or less, but part of a team of four, um, Dr. Amr Phineas, Dr., uh, Dr. Sam, uh, and Dr. Iyer. Um, I was brought into the research team to be the GIS specialist, quote unquote, um, whereas uh, both Stephen and Amr focused more on the underground construction utilities areas, uh, doing a lot of the background research, and uh, Dr. Sam, uh, and I don't want to butcher his last name, um, you can see he's, got, he's the guy with all those letters after his name, he was kind of our senior faculty that's been helping us uh, put together this research. Uh, he's got one of those uh, curriculum vitae that's, you know, 50 pages long or so. So quite an extensive background here, uh, both from the Dell Webb School of Construction Management at Arizona State University, uh, but also the Herberger Design and the Arts, Landscape Architecture, uh, and some conglomeration with the School of Geographic Information Sciences and Urban Planning. I must again acknowledge that I'm just one of the researchers of part of this exciting um, stuff that we've been working on, and I need to give credit where credit is due. So moving on, so this is the research team. We're all part of Arizona State University. We've mentioned augmented reality and GIS. Let's go ahead and jump in and make sure that we're all on the same page. Now, I don't typically like Wikipedia, and I'm not typically one that reads off the of slides, but what I want to make sure is that we all are on the same level, tabula rosa, that we all are understanding augmented reality and geographic information systems to the same level. So augmented reality, or I may refer to it from here on out as AR, is an interactive experience of real world environment where the objects that reside in the real world are enhanced by computer generated perceptual information, sometimes across multiple sensory modalities, including visual, auditory, haptic, uh, somensory, and olfactory. Uh, usually just visual in our circumstances here with augmented reality, but nonetheless, AR can be defined as a system that fulfills three functions. It's a combination of real and virtual worlds, it's real-time interaction with those worlds, and it's accurate 3D registration of virtual and uh, real objects, just like Gavin was mentioning uh, when he was introducing me. The overlaid sen sensory information can be constructive uh, or destructive. This experience is seamlessly interwoven with the physical world such that it is perceived as an immersive aspect of the real environment. The key here is that we're looking through something and we're taking reality and we're adding information to it and we're augmenting this reality to make this new immersive aspect of the environment. 
Okay. In this way, augmented reality alters one ongoing perception of the real world, whereas virtual reality completely replaces the user's real world environment. What does this mean? Augmented reality is a mix of the real and the, the digital. When we talk about virtual reality, that means you are completely immersing yourself in a virtual world. When you think virtual reality, think video games. When you think augmented reality, Perhaps you are familiar with Google's Glass. That's a augmented reality device. Okay, so augmented reality, hopefully we've got a good stance on what that means. So what is geographic information systems then? Lots of terms here, but a GIS uh, does not mean get it surveyed. Sorry for all those surveyors out there. It means geographic information systems. And it's a conceptualized framework that provides the ability to capture and analyze both spatial and geographic data. So that's, that's the important thing here, that GIS is all about collecting and measuring the Earth's data, right? So uh, how the Earth moves, how, it, how it's measured, the gravity, all of these different things. GIS applications are computer-based tools that allow users to create uh, uh, interactive systems with queries, where we can analyze and output data, edit these data, and share the results. Oftentimes, uh, when I'm teaching at ASU, I see a, a GIS does a few things. One, it collects data. Two, it stores said data. Three, you're able to analyze the data. And four, you're able to display the data. In this term, displaying the data could actually mean, through an uh, augmented reality system, displaying it on top of reality. So what were we doing at ASU? In fact, we actually had five published papers. This research started in the um, middle of 2007, and we recently just published our uh, most recent uh, paper, 2009, just about a month ago. So these five research projects or papers, academic peer-reviewed articles, um, all have overlaid concepts and they all build off of each other. So in a traditional academic environment, uh, we start with one thing and we build through scaffolding and we get to our final destination. And so the first paper was a meta analysis of augmented reality change, uh, challenges in the underground utility construction industry. Uh, using augmented reality in horizontal directional drilling or HDD to reduce the risk of utility damages. A review of augmented reality applied to underground construction. Sorry about that. Jumped ahead on me here. Integrating geographic information systems and augmented reality for mapping underground utilities and assessing the accuracy of an outdoor augmented reality solution for mapping underground utilities. Uh, I have provided Gavin uh, links to all of these peer reviewed articles. Uh, you can go online and uh, go to the different journals of engineering uh, and pipelines to go get these uh, if you would like further reference or you can email me. I'll supply my information at the end of the presentation if you would like to know more about any of these specifically published articles. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to spend a few minutes and go through these papers and talk about what we did the f and the research. So the first one was a meta, an a meta analysis of augmented reality challenges. So the transfer transformation of the construction industry from 2D drawings to three dimensional models was a big revolution enhanced by the advent of building information modeling or BIM. The next progression to achieving the full potential of 3D planning models is to apply BIM and associated augmented reality systems specifically for the needs of the underground utility industry. An example is the use of BIM and AR to map, detect, and visualize objects that are not visible to the construction personnel. This paper thus identified, the research identified, and discussed the various challenges of applying augmented reality in the underground construction industry. In this paper, we reviewed over 500 peer-reviewed publications from 2006 to the present and did a meta-analysis on what we found having to do with augmented reality and the underground construction world. So we found out a few things. Number one, what we found out was there are some major challenges and barriers that transcend all the different stages and pieces of underground construction. One, data uh, collection issues. So getting good data are hard. 
Two, modeling alignment barriers. So how do we put the data in an augmented setting on top of the environment, the real world? Hardware limitations, so both on the device capturing the data, so the GPS or GNSS, but the tablet or phone, um, but then also storing these data and managing the data throughout the, the process. So in this project, we selected a bunch of journals, we did searches, we aggregated and put everything and confounded together all of the information that we found so we could classify these issues, barriers, and challenges. These are the journals we selected, ASCE Journal of Computing, you can see Construction, Journal Management and Engineering, Infrastructure Systems, Surveying Engineering, Geotechnical, Geoenvironmental, Advanced Engineering, and you can see the number of articles from each of these uh, publications that we were able to find that had to do with augmented reality and construction. We also noticed that interestingly, uh, distribution-wise, that in 2013, was the largest year um, of people researching and writing papers about augmented reality. I'm not entirely sure, and I don't want to speculate as to why 2013 was a big year, but I would probably have to say it has something to do with Moore's Law and the fact that uh, handheld devices like iPhones at that time uh, really started to come through as possible platforms to perform augmented reality. It's also the same time we start to see things like Google Glass show up. So what types of projects was augmented reality being used on in these papers? Well, you can see here 43% of them for horizontal projects and 57% for vertical projects. So almost a 50-50 split on whether it was uh, construction horizontal or construction vertical. So building, uh, build, making buildings or building roads and things. So the results were found that the four barriers include data collection issues, modeling alignment barriers, hardware limitations, and data storing and management. And you can see how those individuals broke down based upon the different publications we found them in. And so this staged us for the rest of our research I'm gonna review. The next article and research we completed was called Using Augmented Reality and HDD to Reduce the Risk of Utility Damage. So, Utility strikes are a major risk when performing underground uh, excavation activities. According to Common Ground Alliance, CGA, utilities hits have resulted in over $1.7 billion in property damage, close to 2,000 injuries and over 400 deaths in the last 20 years. We can do this better and augmented reality may be a, a solution for that. So even with diligent uh, state on-call systems and 811, we still have a lot of pipe striking and, um, and, and risk management and mitigation that we need to take care of. And uh, the question was, does augmented reality provide a platform to help those situations? So here's an image of a natural gas explosion, a famous one near Royal Oak, Michigan. And you can see absolute devastation. You can imagine if you're hitting a 24 inch gas line uh, and you cause some friction and it explodes, it's gonna cause catastrophic damage and we all know that uh, you know, not one life you know, is worth losing. And so we need to do better. So for this paper, we uh, got together with a local construction underground utilities company here in the Phoenix area where I'm located. And we performed, uh, we came alongside of them for a open cut street project in downtown Phoenix. And you can kind of see some of the images here. And during the excavation of one of the open cut sections, um, we found that all of the uh, 811 markings had been covered, uh, faded, or were actually removed. And so the actual locations of these underground utilities was diminished, so we, we couldn't tell. And what the AR system helped to identify was um, these lines and helped to reduce the time in finding the precise locations uh, of these covered marks, and then provided these horizontal directional drilling crews with enhanced productivities uh, as they were able to pothole and identify the existing utilities with a, a better uh, veracity. However, we found some major limitations and uh, part of it was um, accuracy. And so getting the systems to line up correctly was difficult. Uh, it should be known that for this project, we used a, a pretty commonly known augmented reality uh, solution called VGIS. Uh, you may wanna look them up, they've got a great solution. But at the time in a downtown environment, we found there are a lot of issues with that alignment of the data and the augmented uh, piece and the real world piece. 
some of that being contributed to GPS, but some of that being contributed to the devices and the urban canyon that we were in. Next, we went ahead and we reviewed more augmented reality applications in terms of underground construction, but this time we started to focus in on the different phases of a construction project, pre-construction, construction, and post-construction, and we wanted to determine where augmented reality could be an appropriate platform for that stage of the project life cycle. And so you can see here, we identified in the design planning stages, the superstructure, structure, substructure, finishing, inspection, maintenance, and facility management, uh, augmented reality could be used. Additionally, we found that the percentage of articles based on these different phases talking about augmented reality, uh, predominantly when people talk about augmented reality, they are thinking during the construction phase, so the actual breaking of ground and building. But as you can see, there was almost a bell curve for post-construction and pre-construction with the smallest amount going to the pre-planning and pre-construction phases of the project. Uh, and again, which you would probably suspect most of that coming during the construction phase, uh, the actual breaking ground and building phase of the project. Just like we had mentioned earlier, uh, or I had mentioned earlier, can you imagine being out on site, being able to use a phone or something in your helmet, you're the directional drill crew, and you're able to see with some amount of confidence that there is a, you know, a utility line you need to be aware of, or you actually have the running line in the system. And so it helps, or the, the hope was it helps the actual construction uh, and the speed and the productivity of that construction. But as you can see, augmented reality can also be utilized in both the pre and post construction phases, not just during building. All right, next we found the distribution of articles that propose augmented reality improvement focus eye, focuses or foci. So here, most of the articles we read, so most of the research at least, is showing that people are trying to use augmented reality for productivity. They're, they've come to the conclusion that maybe augmented reality will help them do things faster. And we know that faster means more money. Money, money is good, right? We all work for money. We need that paycheck. However, that's limiting yourself and it's kind of filtering out the fact that augmented reality can be used for quality control and inspection purposes, training and education. And what I find to be maybe the gap here where we should see more and more, again, with the mitigation of trying to stop pipe strikes, uh, safety, right? And so using augmented reality for a, a safety mitigation tactic, right? And so this was a good uh, research uh, that was able to show us where, when, and how, and why people are using augmented reality in these construction industries. Next, we segued into focusing more on geographic information systems, or GIS, and using augmented reality to actually do some underground mapping. So underground infrastructure is a critical component of the basic utility services provided to all of society, right? It's the single largest threat to the safety of underground utility lines is being struck by a construction earthwork project. That drill hits, that trencher hits, whatever the case may be, somebody hits that utility line. One of the causes of this problem is the miscommunication between the stakeholders. So that's the utility owner. So who owns the right-of-way utility? The person performing the engineering services, the person performing the construction services, and then potentially the 811 blue stake people coming out to mark this. And so that transference of knowledge, if you've ever played a game of telephone, we know when it starts on one end, by the time it gets to the other end, it's degraded and may not be the exact information you need to know. So GIS, and more specifically, highly accurate geographic information systems fill that gap and they can make these data accurate enough that the augmented reality solution could, again, help out with this mapping. And what we found was there is very limited amount of research uh, at this moment in time in terms of heavy GIS mapping and augmented reality. Now, when I say that, maybe you know a few hundred articles at max may, Honestly, if I remember correctly, much less than that. And so there was, there's a, there's a need here for us to be testing augmented reality with high-end GIS solutions or GPS solutions. And so you can see here that we identified the problem that was pipe strikes and we want to increase worker awareness, productivity, things like that, safety. Next, we wanted to integrate AR and geographic information systems together. 
We then developed our own system, and so we created something called XRGIS, which was available at the time um, through the iOS store. Uh, we used the AR kit uh, from Apple to help create that. We then actually demonstrated, so testing for the debugging and publishing of the application, and then we gave the program and a test course to a group uh, to evaluate how the system, this new augmented reality system we created called XRGIS, worked in a real world atmosphere. So this focus group not only had to use the app and their phone, but they also had to fill out a comprehensive questionnaire. So what we did is we had them go download XRGIS on their phone. They had to follow two lines, or sorry, three lines, a gas line, an electric line, and a water line, signified by a dash line, a dash dot line, and a solid line. We gave them the size of the line, 45 inch, 15 inch, and 75 inch. And we gave them um, the ability to put in the, I'm sorry, the depths of 45 inch, 15 inch, and 75 inch. And we asked them to input that information and utilize the program and upload what they did to the cloud afterwards. On the right hand side, you can see a picture from the actual iOS store and you can see some imagery from what the app, what it looked like. And so we had these people go out and go collect this information um, out in the field. Following, oops, sorry, following that collection, so 20 industry experts participated in this validation testing. And you can see a breakdown of the sample characteristics of the individuals presented in table three on the right. Interestingly, our median age was 31 years, so in the millennial time frame, quote unquote. And so perhaps it would be important to note here that some of the results from our analysis might be coming from the fact that the, uh, the typical um, the typical characteristic of the expert was of a younger age generation. Additionally, um, you can see here some of the types of questions we asked. And so things like, was it easy to use mobile augmented reality to record and capture, capture the location of utility lines? Do you strongly agree on a Likert scale all the way to strongly disagree? Things like this. Did the XRGIS program provide an effective augmented reality visualization interface for different pipelines? Did augmented reality on a mobile device effectively be used for inputting utility information? And so we asked these types of questions and then we finished it off with an open-end questionnaire. What did you like most about the app? What did you like least about the app? And what other comments do you have? So the breakdown came out that you can see a percentage of agree answers that most of the people were relatively favorable about the app. They thought that the augmented reality app could do things that would help their business. They could identify underground utilities. They were able to effectively enter data on their mobile device. They were able to visualize the data um, effectively. Um, it was easy to use to help physically navigate through the site, provided an easier method for navigating, provided an easier method for recording. And would they use this again for future projects? And I think most telling was 95% of the participants said, yes, they would. And so to me, that was a very indicative response of augmented reality is coming and people are willing to start utilizing it if it works correctly. So in this research, this is how we would propose to use augmented reality in um, the underground uh, utility market for locating. So first you always wanna contact uh, the the contractor marks the dig site. So contractor goes out and marks their, where their utility line is gonna go in. They then put that spatial information into the XRGIS app by using the phone or tablet and the camera and literally on the, on the phone or tablet uh, going down the line and clicking through. That contract then uploads the new line to the cloud database. They request a dig ticket from the one call center the one call center uh, informs the utility owner, so you know maybe the power company or gas company. The utility provider sends field locators to mark the dig area. They use the augmented reality application to find the new proposed line. They then go in, mark the uh, additional utilities out on site, and then they provide um, all of this information via the augmented reality app back to the contractor so that the contractor can then use all of this spatial information 
uh, for the actual construction breaking ground of the site um, and the further excavation. The work here is very promising uh, with limitations related to the experience of the testing participants and currently available hardware technology. Um, and I think these are going to improve over time, right? So Moore's law says we're going to get faster and smaller every couple years in terms of technology. And as technology continues to advance, I believe we're going to continue to see uh, better augmented reality uh, systems available to the public. Um, however, one of the major limitations we found again was related to GPS accuracy. So the use of GPS is an effective tracking tool for outdoor projects, but in order to obtain accurate reading information of the user's location, it has to have a number of satellites visible, right? So clear sky. And so in downtown urban canyon environments, you may not get that. And so if you do not have what we call high accuracy GPS or GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite System, your augmented reality application um, potentially is going to hurt. And so we learned of this limitation from the spatial accuracy of the uh, GPS. And in this next uh, research I'm going to share with you, we actually wanted to say dive into how much of a difference high accuracy GPS has in this new world of augmented reality. So the last bit of research we did was assessing the accuracy of an outdoor augmented reality solution for mapping underground utilities. We uh, just kind of reviewing, we started at the beginning and we wanted to see who out there has studied this, how is it being applied to the construction industries, what phases do we see this happening. Um, we, we then looked at how uh, effective it would be in the hands of the workers. We then looked at how feasible it would be to integrate with high accuracy GPS and GIS. And now we're looking at actually assessing how those GPS influence these augmented reality situations. So in the screenshots on, on, on your screen, you are actually looking at the XR GIS app we developed. You'll see the crosshairs in the middle. So by utilizing, let me grab my phone here, by utilizing your phone and simply pointing to a location with your camera, that crosshairs will actually um, be superimposed, augmented onto reality. And if you click the record button, the system is able to triangulate using its algorithms to calculate the X, Y, and Z of the crosshairs you're pointing to. And so you can imagine that if I put the crosshairs on the photo A on the left, that we are going to show a, a hand hole or utility cap. On B, you're seeing a line, a utility mark next to a pole. C, you're seeing the, the interface on marking it, so you're able to put attribute information in, like the name of the type of line, who owns it, the depth, and the date. And additionally, on the uh, D and E, you can see where you would be able to use this same marking utility to go down a curb line or a paint line you name it. And so we utilize the app or your phone and the phone's camera is able to display the real world. And we're now able to not only display geographic information overlaid, but more importantly, using the augmented reality solution, collect new data to be put back into the system. So if you've ever seen somewhere like this, this is a common site, tons of ugly flagging, tons of utilities, a culvert, an ADA ramp. You've got a lot going on. I see a cable pedestal there, a utility box in the back. I mean, this is a maze or a labyrinth of, of underground utilities. And so understanding what corresponds under the earth to these lines and then accurately getting it into a GIS is critical. And so what we did here, and you can see the kind of diagram, from your phone, that's the centerpiece, we used keyhole markup language or our Google Earth KML language to collect and store the polyline and, and, and point vertice information. So that vector data that are collected. So GIS, if you know, always have two types of data, uh, vector data or raster data. We are using vector data here. We used KML language to store those vector lines and measurements into a GIS cloud storage. At the same time, we were using navigation satellite systems, so GPS or GNSS, if you're talking about satellites outside of the United States, um, into, to augment your position of your phone. 
and then the camera on your phone is being shot down to the line or the paint markings and you're augmenting the utility line into your data set. Now, what we did here is we tested out several GPS systems with your phone. And so different phones have different GPS one, and then we use different third party GPS such as Bad Elf and Trimble to augment and get a higher accuracy. And we wanted to test and analyze to see that what happened to the results of the augmented reality collected data as your position got more accurate. And so to suffice to say, there is a ton of math behind all of this. RMSE, um, root, uh, root mean square error calculations. We looked at Euclidean distances. We did all of the ANOVAs and the standard types of statistics that you would uh, think to use. I'm not gonna dive into any of that in this presentation. It's way too much into the weeds. However, if you wanna pick up the publication, it is, like I said, published in a journal of engineering. You're more than welcome to pick that up and take a look at it. I just want you to know that this is not some qualitative research. This was quantitative. We used math and hard authoritative data and measurements to determine these results. So what we did is we went um, down in downtown Phoenix area. This is actually Earl Street, if you're familiar with the central Phoenix area. And we had two uh, utility lines that were pre-marked and pre-painted. We did not paint them. We had a gas line as represented by the yellow squares and dashes and an electrical line. What you can see there is in the triangle, starting on the right hand side of your screen, going up in iteration, one, two, three, four, five, six. Each of those numbers and triangle locations was where we placed through the augmented reality, the point on top of the paint. So if you can imagine that one triangle on the right hand side is literally us using the augmented, or I'm sorry, not the augmented reality yet. Let me take a step back. The, the points you're seeing here were measured with a total station. So we used a Trimble, uh, I forget the exact Trimble unit. It was a Trimble, I think S5 robot. And so we shot in these lines to have centimeter or sub centimeter accuracy, millimeter accuracy. Each of the actual shots are the numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm sorry, not what we collected with the uh, augmented reality. So this is your authoritative data. These are the areas we collected. We did it in North American data, 1983, Arizona Central State Plain, uh, International Feet, okay? So then we went ahead and we tested the, the course out. So if we refer to this as the course. We attached different GPS devices and we tested out a few different smartphones. What you can see here is we used an iPhone 8, an iPhone 10, a Bad Elf GNSS surveyor, and we used the Trimble R2, which is uh, one of the top of the line Trimble uh, RTK systems on the market. You can see that the iPhone 8 and iPhone 10, so just so you know, iPhone won't uh, qualify data much better than three to five meters uh, based on their specifications. We call that consumer grade. You then get into Bad Elf, so that's the GNSS surveyor, which you're seeing on the screen there, that yellow device. Um, you may be familiar with the GPS Pro as well. This is a one to three meter, really a one meter accurate unit. Uh, so we call this GIS grade. And then we got to the survey grade, which was the total station and the R2, which was using real-time kinematic or RTK corrections. So you're down to the centimeter range. So we started with multiple meters, we went down to one meter, and then we went down to centimeter range. We proceeded to run that uh, test course several times with each of the devices. And you can see this is a screenshot of the utility markings. And so you can see the, the, the lines there going down the street where we shot them in. The center image is actually a, a screenshot from within the augmented reality app. And I'd like to go ahead and say we were not OSHA certified. Amers shoes and shorts there in that photo, um, I don't think would pass any type of construction safety. So disregard that. But you can see the crosshairs putting that virtual vertices within the underground utility. Then you can see the Bad Elf Surveyor on the right hand side and the uh, unit we utilized um, uh, with, with the monopod to post that up. And then not, last but not least, the Trimble RTK uh, R2 unit on the very right image. So 
All of that to be said that these are the results we found. So the map in the top left hand and bottom left hand corners are showing you field measurements from the iPhone 8 compared to the authoritative data collected by the total station. Quickly, because I'm running out of time here, notice that the field measurements, those red and yellow lines, are extremely swirly. They do not follow the baseline gas and water line that was collected with the total station at all. They are unusable. They don't even, they look like a ball of yarn, right? And so immediately you can start to discern that unless you have a higher accuracy GPS unit, you're, you're not going to be able to effectively collect augmented reality data, right? So data of the ground based on this uh, AR system. Now, the figures on the right, figure seven is the iPhone linked to the Bad Elf GPS. So the um, GNSS surveyor, that one meter unit. Now look to see that on the yellow line, it did great. It almost stuck to the utility line completely. So at a meter accuracy, it is a night and day difference on the RMSC, so the relative deliverable of the vector lines created. You will notice at one meter, though, that one of the data collection runs uh, got a little squirrely and went into the middle of the road. Last but not least, we utilized the Trimble R2 unit, which is the RTK system, so into the centimeter range. And notice now that the, the augmented data lines up fairly well with the actual real data collected with the total station. I just want to point out, you may be asking yourself, how the heck did they map through those cars in the northeast corner of the map? Well, that imagery is not current. So that imagery, those cars were not there when we collected the data. So let's take a look at the results. So here it is, the R2, the Bad Elf GNSS Surveyor, the iPhone 10, and the iPhone 8. On your um, one uh, reference here, you've got your root mean square error, so your RMSE going up from 0 to 5 meters. Notice that the only two devices that actually had an RMSE value worth a, worth a darn were both the Bad Elf unit and the Trimble R2. So immediately again, you start to realize that without a higher accuracy GPS, augmented reality just ain't going to cut it. You can also see there the precision and the confidence rating interval based on um, the sample that we collected. To back that up, you can also see here the different accuracies. And so if you look at RMSE for a value, uh, you can see that the Bad Elf was sub one meter, the Trimble unit at 0.73, the Trimble unit was at half of a meter, and the iPhones were well above a meter. And you can see that transcend over both the average Euclidean error and the central errors. And so just statistically speaking, again, what we're starting to see here, the picture and the narrative is, you are not going to be able to confidently complete an augmented reality project in the construction industry unless you've got high accuracy GNSS. It just has to happen. So what are the conclusions here quickly as I wrap up? One, augmented reality is a feasible technology in the underground construction space. It was found. We did the research, we talked to the experts, we, uh, we looked at how other people were utilizing it, and we have found that it is a feasible technology for the UG space. Two, augmented reality can be used in all stages of the project. So I don't want to limit your focus on just the actual groundbreaking construction piece of the project uh, and the time savings and, and the productivity, but let's also remind that augmented reality can be uh, pre-construction and post-con uh, in terms of safety mitigation, training, decision-making, stakeholder involvement, you name it. Third, augmented reality can save money, lives, and time. Sort of just mentioned that. There are some qualitative things, not just quantitative, that augmented reality can do. It can save money, lives, and time. And when you add those three things up, um, it can become a very powerful solution. At the end of the day, augmented reality requires high accuracy GNSS solutions to operate well. There is just no way to have a confident augmented reality solution in an outdoor activity space. So keep in mind, uh, augmented realities can do better in indoor environments based on SLAM and planar algorithms. Um, but when you are outside in the natural environment, you really got to have a high accuracy GNSS solution. And 
what our research found was the bare minimum to do any type of confident AR collection would be you need at least a one meter unit like a Bad Elf GNSS surveyor um, or the equivalent of. Number five, more testing and research is needed before widespread adoption. We did find pitfalls, we found issues, we found some people just not wanting to do things like this. I literally had one person that had been in the telecom utility industry for the last 35 years and they said, Nick, I don't want no more clicking. No more clicking. Well, okay, so if we don't want no more clicking, maybe, maybe we, we're not here yet, but the, the reality is augmented reality is coming. It's coming and we've got to get ready for it. And so that's going to be my last point. There is a great author named Spencer Johnson. Dr. Johnson wrote a book called Who Moved My Cheese? You can buy it from Amazon for about $3 used. It's about 100 pages. It talks about a couple little mice and humans who follow the cheese. And so I would leave you with this. If you are in the construction industry, you probably make good money. You probably have been around a long time. You know what you're doing. The question is, are you adopting the technologies of the future? Are you ready for these innovations to take place? Are you following the cheese? Or have you got um, happy with the cheese you already have? And in these times where we work in virtual environments like Zoom, as we're doing right now, I can't see a trend back towards more traditional paper maps. We're only going to move more and more into the digital and virtual realms. And again, augmented reality is going to be um, a core piece of that in the underground utility market. And so thank you so much. Uh, sorry for going over a few minutes on my talk. Uh, if you have any questions or need a list of references, you can Google search me. You can find me in Google Scholar. You can look me up at Arizona State University or LinkedIn, but I, I, I certainly would love to hear from you. So Gavin, that, that was it. I don't know if anybody uh, had any questions or maybe I just bored everybody. Oh, to yeah. Talk. Oh, yeah, there are questions. Yeah, and to your cheese analogy, it, it, it ain't easy being cheesy. But um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. We're, we're not going to solve the, the huge demand for infrastructure and, and, and sustainability of that infrastructure, especially as it gets more crowded with conventional methods. There's just no way in the world we could sustain that. So I'm, I'm kind of glad to see that somebody's putting, uh, you know, really studying how, how precise and, you know, how accurate this stuff can be. So we definitely got questions. There's uh, questions about the app, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the app is not really a commercial product or, or something that's, uh, you know, like a freeware or something. The app was for your testing, correct? Because people are asking for the link to your app. So I have to double check. It still may avail be available in the App Store, but Gavin, you're 100% correct. It is not designed to be a professional app. Uh, it was designed simply for research, and in fact, uh, I'm not a great programmer at all, and, and it's not the greatest app, but again, it was for functionality's sake. You could look for it. It may be on there, XR-GIS still, but we may have taken it down. If you are looking for a professional GIS augmented reality app, um, Alex over at VGIS has got a pretty good system. That would be kind of who I would point you to out of the gate. But yeah, I'm sorry. The, the XR-GIS was just for real study academic purposes. Okay. And... Uh... Yeah, like a presenter today, they, they've uh, adapted the, you know, uh, such technologies. So, uh, yeah, comment, yeah, great AR presentation. Um, so your phone side shots have error and azimuth, inclination and such. Did you discover how large that error might be? And how did you measure distance? Yeah, I think that's going to get into the weeds a little much. And I would just say, why don't you shoot me an email and I can I can share that with you. Um, but we, we focused, and again, so we used the AR kit provided by Apple. And so some of the precondition out of the box um, system settings there. And so we focused more on the GPS side of the world, less on how the camera was interacting. Now, what I will tell you is for these augmented reality apps, you, there is a version of iPhone or newer you have to utilize. And so there has some things to do with the focal length of the camera and such. Uh, you can't just go do this with any camera. Uh, and I believe it has to have two cameras actually. And so it's, it's, it's measuring the distances based on both. Uh, I, truthfully, I'm more on the GIS, the data side. Um, but yeah, if you would like, certainly shoot me an email and I'd, I'd love to get back to you on that. 
Okay. Um, somebody asked for a link to the Vegas, so uh, I just put that in the chat box. The um, somebody's asking, will, the app, will this app work with uh, Vivex VM map and Blue Star GPS? Well, I think you answered it's not really a commercial app, so um, they could look. Google's a great way to search for uh, AR maps for utility viewing. Uh, Vegas is is one of them, but yeah, it's one uh, one that's fairly uh, fairly widespread. So you uh, talked about the different levels of, of receiver and. Um, you talked about the uh, the most precise one being the R2. Actually, I beg to differ a little bit on that. Even within that brand, there are more higher precision. Uh, R and R12. Yeah. What I've said is uh, RTK systems that are in the Bluetooth GIS realm, and so yeah. Yeah. not your traditional survey RTK rovers, but yeah, R10s, R2s. Yeah, they're going to be a little bit better. Well, you, you mentioned the Bad Elf Surveyor, and I, I've got one of those, uh, but there's the, that Bad Elf Flex as well, which uh, that, that's a high-end, uh, high-precision unit. So maybe some ex people ought to experiment. There are lots of ways I've been experimenting with, like a, what people would call a third-party receiver and using Bluetooth to pass the NMEA for mock location in, a, in, in an app. So it's funny, I turned my, my bus finder into a centimeter grade uh, unit. So <laughs> it was, it was a lot of fun folks can have. Uh, so Nick, yeah, uh, that's about it for the questions. And I really appreciate you doing this at short notice. When I saw about your paper, I thought, no, that's exactly what we should have in there is some folks that have done some serious testing on it. It all sounds really promising though. Uh, AR can be uh, very precisely registered. Is that your conclusion? It is, yeah, and and there are, and so we really just looked at the uh, the GPS, so your positional accuracy, but there are many tricks for aligning and getting the augmented reality to sync and align better, but you're absolutely, absolutely right, Gavin. If there's any takeaways, it would be, gosh, if I haven't even looked at augmented reality and I'm in the construction industry, I, I would probably take a gander. It's worth your time, especially if you've got a little extra time at your home, but yes. Uh, I don't think we're moving away from technologies like this. If anything, we're full steam ahead towards them. Cool, cool, yep. And we're gonna have it in heads up displays on our, on our safety glasses. But uh, yeah, other technologies as well. Uh, I've seen people take like a, a robotic total station and hit orientated points like, <clears throat> you know, in an urban canyon where the G G GNSS is not going to work and use that for orientation. So yeah, the, um, there's a lot of options out there. Well, thanks a lot, Nick. Um, and then uh, that concludes our final presentation for the day.